smart turntable. Hello there, welcome to Chappers Photography Channel. It's unboxing day again today. What are we unboxing? We're unboxing the Foldio 360 turntable. Smart turntable. So this is what it looks like. It's a, if that comes into focus, there we go. So it's a, uh, it's an aluminium turntable with a little light on it. Um, so you can put your product on the turntable, it spins around and it makes your smartphone or your uh, infrared uh, triggerable DSLR take photos. Um, it can be used standalone or it can be used in conjunction with the Foldio Studio which I uh, did an unboxing of just recently. Uh, you can see a little twiddling thing up here in the, in the corner, that's a link to it. Uh, don't go there yet watch this um, and I'll leave a link there um, at the end uh, and in the comments if you want to go and have a look at that. Um, it looked really good. I saw it at the Photography Expo uh, up at the NEC back in March, April time, I can't remember. Um, I've had so much on, work's been busy, I haven't had a chance to open it and I haven't had a need to use it. So a friend of mine wants me to do a little bit of product photography for him, some jewellery. I thought this would be just a ticket to create some 360 images for his website. So I thought it was about time I took it out of the box. So let's have a look and uh, let's see how good it is. Okay, so here we have the item. Let's have a look at the packaging first. Nice crisp white box, emulating an apple, who seems to set the standard, maybe. Company moniker, it's, it's, it's nice quality. Let's look at the back here. So we have a, uh, a picture of the products. Uh, Bluetooth connection the Foldio 360 with a smartphone, Bluetooth to create 360 images, infrared remote control for DSLR cameras or any other cameras which support a infrared trigger. And the Halo Edge lighting system. This, I guess, can be folded with, uh, it, for that, with it pointing backwards towards an infinity curve to help with the lighting with inside that light cube. So, um, Pretty sensible. Uh, it's got a max load of up to five kilograms. It gives a size, which is approximately 25 centimeters in diameter, 45 millimeters high. It supports Bluetooth infrared, and it has got AC 100 to 240 um, as an input power, and the output power is a DC 12 volt. There's an application platform, and it gives a website and some details for where to get that. Nothing else to say. Let's, uh, let's open it up. Okay, so on the top here we have some instructions. Let's set them down to the side. A bit of foam padding. And the item. Okay, so in the introduction I said it was aluminium. And that's certainly what it seems to look like on the back. Ah, but maybe it's just a smart bit of photography. It's not aluminium at all, it is, um, it is white plastic. But that's, uh, that was an assumption made by me, not, not a, a promise made by the uh, manufacturer. Okay, so we have a two pin Euro plug going to a little DC input. Uh, they tell me at the time that they did not have UK plug sockets, but they did give us free of charge an adapter, which I thought was fair enough. It's a bit unsightly, but it does the job, doesn't it? Nothing else in the box. That's quite curious as to what that's for. Maybe it's maybe it's a placeholder. Maybe it's an afterthought. Maybe it's something else they were going to add, but decided against it or priced out the priced out of the uh, scope of the product. Nothing else in there apart from some more padding. So. Uh, that was short and sweet, wasn't it? Power cable is a power cable. Instructions. Thank you for purchasing the Folio 360 Smart Turntable. Before removing this protective film, please check for any damage or deformation 
off the turntable. Exchange policy may not be applicable once the protective film is removed. Okay, well that's got not as much as a scratch on it, so I think we can safely assume that's okay. I can no longer say it was damaged. Now, I suppose before I carry on, I should really read the instructions. That would be the sensible thing to do. So that concludes the unboxing of the product. I think what I should do now is spend a few minutes reading the instructions and I'll come back to you having plugged it in. Um, and we'll test it as it is. Um, I'm not going to put it into the uh, the folder where studio because that will only limit the view that we have um, to see what it's like. So I'll read these and I'll come straight back to you. So I'm back. Instructions have been read. The box has been tidied away. We just have the device itself and the power cord, which we're just about to plug in. Um, and I'll show you the various different options uh, we have. Um, there's three. There's the standard mode. This is just cycling on its own, as if it was in a shop front being a uh, used to display something. Whilst it's revolving, of course, you could take a photo, multiple photos, or a video, and then use it. Or we can plug it in, pair it to a smartphone, and then that gives us some more options. We can control the light at the front here. We can control the speed. We can get the phone to take photos. Or we can use a DSLR and we can use the IR capabilities of this to trigger the DSLR to take photos. So let's try the first option. I'll plug that into the uh, EU to AC adapter. And under here, there's just simply one button and one inlet. So, plugging it in, everything lights up just to prove it works. We've got a little recess here so that we can sit it down on the ground. And there we go. So, it's now waiting for me to connect something up via Bluetooth. If I wanted it just to revolve constantly to take my own photos, then I have to go underneath and I have to hold this button down for a couple of seconds. Now, I don't know if you can hear that. There's quite a loud hum resonating from within there. So if you uh, wanted to use this for something quiet, that you'd probably be out of here. There we go. So that's effectively what it gives you without using any of the smart capabilities that it has. I did time it, it's about 50 seconds per revolution. You could bring your, uh, your DSLR in here, you could set it up and you could just film that revolving or take a photo, take a time lapse. You could use it for whatever you wanted. Not really the spirit of what this was intended for, but I think it's good that they give you that um, ability just to have something revolving on its own. So there we go. Not very exciting, but option one. To put this into pairing mode, can hold it without the top revolving. Press that button twice again, and it now goes into a pairing mode. Now logic says, don't have the wire coming out the front because it's unsightly, but of course you're going to take the photo this way. So you're not going to get the photo, uh, excuse me, you're not going to get the wire in the shot if it's out the front because you're going to be taking a photo through this plane. And that also shows why they call that light the halo light. So because I don't have a huge amount of uh, imagination, and this is a photography channel, we're just going to use a little point and shoot as the uh, display item and I place that roughly in the center of the uh, of the box. So now I connect my phone. I'm going to put this just at the back of the shot here so that you can see this. In fact I'm going to put that in front of here so you can see that from this camera and then I think I'm going to bring the shot in so that you can see what's happening on the smartphone 
So I've zoomed right in with my overhead onto my phone so you can see what controls I'm doing. And then I've repositioned this low level camera here so you can see the difference it makes there. So I launched the app. I have to have Bluetooth enabled here and it's connected. If it hadn't have been connected, it would just say connect to folio and I would have been straight in there. So now I'm in, I have several different options. I have this, which controls the speed of the rotation of the table, one times, two times, or three times. And then I have this button here, where I can choose the number of frames I want to have taken, and that's 48, 24, or 36. If I want to manually control, I can press this to be left or right if I just wanted to step around myself, which is quite nice. If I wanted to do some, if I had something still on there, I want to take a photo for insurance purposes and I didn't want to go through the palaver of making the 360 model, you could use it for that. We also have a slider here, which turns the halo light on. I think the halo light, the reason for that is if you're using it in a little white box, this is going to create a nice curtain of light behind, effectively giving the, the item a halo. If it was turned to the front, it would probably make your uh, picture un underexposed because the light that was going straight towards the camera. Once you're set up and you have your shot and you're happy with it, all you need to do once you've chosen the frame, so for here we'll go for uh, 48 frames at three times speed. So we've decided upon the number of frames, 48. We've decided upon the speed three times. What I'm going to do now is put my smartphone into this little tripod. Get the framing that I want. What I'm going to do is I've just got some little LED lights here that I'm just going to use to uh, put some lighting onto the subject. All I will do now is to press the record button. And that will stop 48 times in one revolution. And the smartphone is taking a photo every time it stops. Okay, so that's just coming around down. 44, 46, 47, 48. Lights out of the way. Move the camera out of the way. Let's put this back down here. Yeah. Okay. So I had a practice with one already. And the result that we get, we see this all stitched together, and then we can then use this just to have a look at the 360 view of the item we've just taken a photo of. It's, it's quite a nice, nice result. We have some options in camera. We can choose uh, to change the uh, colour temperature if it had come out a bit too warm or a bit too cool. I think ours is quite good here. Uh, we have some adjustments to the white point. We have some adjustments to we can crop, we can expand, yeah, we've got a, and some exposure if we were underexposed or overexposed, or we want to play with the exposures to get a different mood. We can do that. I don't think I'll save that. I think it was okay as shot. And that I can I can send out and I can share uh, via Facebook, Twitter, a data export. Um, and I can upload it. So, quite a nice little option. So that was the uh, second option. Um, I think that is pretty much for uh, your average eBay shop runner. Smartphone, straight in front of the object, 360 degree spin, knit it together on the phone, push it up there, everything's done for you. Very nice. A nice result, everything's needed for that. 
if you want to do something a little bit better, a little bit um, higher quality. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, a friend of mine has got a jeweler's and he's considering having some of his stock put on something like this. I'd like to set this up within a little, uh, like the Folio Studio or within a light box, really sort of blow out uh, all the background with a nice infinity curve or maybe uh, a black velvet uh, backdrop um, and really pump the quality up and, and use a DSLR. So I'm gonna take the uh, little iPhone attachment off of here. I'm gonna replace it with a DSLR. It's a great little mini tripod. with this. I, uh, I did an unboxing of it a little while ago. I'll put a little, little link in the corner, bubbling away if you'd like to watch it. And I'll leave a, a little comment at the end um, if you'd like to take a look if it's something that you're interested in. So let's put our product back on. Let's get our lighting back in place. So we know we're looking like for like. Now what the creators have done here, I think it's very clever. Um, they've not done anything amazing. All they've done is um, use the infrared code that you uh, use to trigger your DSLR. I think most of us use something like this from time to time. Um, when we uh, want to trigger it remotely, they've just taken the code of this and they're just firing it out of the uh, the front of the circle. What a clever idea. So any camera that takes an infrared remote control is compatible by brand, obviously, if the brand's covered, by this um, by this product, which I think is um, which is very good. So there we go, let me just frame that up. That's nice. Now what I'm doing now, that is in focus. I'm going to switch to manual focus and I've made sure that the flash is off, cannot be triggered. So I'm happy with that exposure. Then we go back into our application and where we can see here we have the smartphone DSLR or video mode. We choose DSLR, we select the brand, we have Canon, Nikon, Pentex and Sony and an option to update the camera list. I'll do that now just so you can see if there are any other brands. Okay, so we have uh, two options for Canon, two for Nikon, two for Pentex and one for Sony. So if your camera isn't made there then I suggest you can't use it. There's a connection test. That won't work until I've set up my triggering mode. One second. So again, we use a connection test and we can hear there that the uh, camera took a photo. So now it's exactly the same as last time. We choose the number of shots and we choose the speed at which we want it to rotate. I don't really understand why we need that to be faster on the speed um, because we're going to take a photo each time. So we've done the connection test all we do then is the record. So let's go around to do a full 360 for 48 exposures. They will obviously be sent to the memory card here and there are details in the instructions of what you do with those pictures to get them processed and stitched together. I will do that by the time that I cut the final movie and then I shall bring those back into the uh, fully edited version um, and we'll splice those into the footage and you can see what the result is and we can see how the result compares to the smartphone. It's not the most exciting thing to watch but I wanted to go through it, I wanted you to see what the process is like um, so that you're aware if it's something you're considering buying, you're not going to buy it with, uh, without knowing that. Okay, so that's finished. I now have 48 pictures on my DSLR. I'll turn that off. Let's turn these off. Okay, so that gives us the uh, three modes. There is a final mode on here, which I didn't look at. 
and that's purely a video mode and this is a video mode if you were to want to film it with the camera um, you just film it rotating through for 360 degrees um, much the same as you would with an external camera if you're using it as we were at the beginning the benefit is it's straight on your iPhone but of course you could set your iPhone up to record that anyway so I'm not sure why you would actually use that in here um, other than you govern the the speed one two and three um, so you you could have a faster revolution um, by doing it via the iPhone um, I suppose for completeness I can just film that quickly and at least we can put the uh, put the footage into the uh, video so you can see okay so that's set up now I've got the camera smack back in the center of the image and for video I'm just pressing start again there's quite an uh, annoying sort of humming mechanical sound as that goes around so I suspect if you're going to do this for a bit of product you want a little bit of nice ambient music bang there we go I'll just bring that up here and we go to the there we go so that's quite nice pretty effortless so that's very simple isn't it all nicely in your iPhone you can share that online you can push that somewhere else very handy so that shows uh, everything that the product does um, let's just have a quick wrap up and then uh, we'll call it Hi. a day I'm back for the wrap up and I thought what I'd do is combine, combine the wrap up with the viewing online of the images that we shot on the iPhone and the DSLR when we're shooting in photo mode and it's only the photo mode pictures that you can upload to the website um, the video that was shot is already seamless <clears throat> Excuse me. The photos have been stitched together on here, so I thought we'd have a quick look. So, Spinzam is the website that the uh, the company have created for this purpose. You have to sign in. It's just a, an email address uh, and name, and then you can start uploading your images and your captures. And then you get a page. Um, and as you can see here. We have the iPhone test and we have the DSLR test. When I uploaded the DSLR test, um, I decided to crop in quite tight to the image. I didn't on the iPhone, so unfortunately it's not quite like for like, but such is life. So what can you do? Uh, you can give it a title, you can give it some tags, um, and you can give a description, and you can leave it on there so anybody browsing the website can see it. You can have it so it's linked, so you can give a link to somebody else they can see it by looking at the link and you can keep it private so only you can log on and see it if you want to share it from here you've got a link which you can copy and paste and put into any document you want and or email um, and you've got some text you can embed into a piece of html the product of your hard work so here we go this is from the iphone and I'll start looking at that. Um, that's uh, nothing, as you say, it's nothing special done with the lighting. That was just the iPhone in that little mini tripod. And the DSLR quite tightly. The details there. It's not scrolling very smoothly. I'm using a trackpad on a uh, little MacBook Pro. Um, but I think on an iPad that would be uh, that'd be looking pretty nice and silky as that spun around there. So, so there we go. That's the options. Uh, I can't remember what I paid for it. It wasn't a great deal. It wasn't a great offer at the show because it was the two guys that own the company that were there selling them. They're available all over the place. I will leave links in the description to the company. Um, but Amazon, just just a quick Google, you'll you'll soon find it. Um, I think it's a great product. I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of it and I think the more I use it the more I'm going to think of things I can use it for. I'm going to end now, it's been another long video, um, I hope it's uh, been insightful and I hope perhaps it's uh, given you some information that you can make a decision if you are considering buying it.
If you've got any questions, thoughts or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I do spend some time and go through them and I do respond uh, to people that do that. Um, and if you have a few minutes, please check out the channel. There's some other unboxing videos and there's some videos directly linked from this one that you could find interesting. Thanks for watching.